بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we have a function f that is proper closed and convex we want to show that the Legendre Finchel transform of the function if taken twice will yield the same function what is the story we have function f with domain rn and the codomain is the extended set of real numbers including plus infinity the effective domain of f is the set of all points in the n-dimensional space where the function is strictly finite the Finchel conjugate or Finchel transform of the function f is another function g of y and g of y is defined as follows for a given y g of y is obtained by constructing the function y transpose x minus f of x and then we obtain the supremum of this function over x in rn if f of x at a certain x is plus infinity then this quantity is minus infinity so the supremum can be taken over the effective domain of f for x outside the effective domain we know that this quantity here is minus infinity the by conjugate is the conjugate of the conjugate so this is the function f tilde of x for a given x we obtain f tilde of x by writing down y transpose x minus g of y and we obtain the supremum over y in rn we take it here without proof that if f is proper which means that the effective domain is non-empty in other words f is not equal to plus infinity for every x in rn if f is proper closed which means that f is a lower semi-continuous function and convex then also g and f tilde will be proper closed and convex the focus now is to show that f of x is equal to f tilde of x this means that under this assumption the conjugate of the conjugate is the original function we will do this in steps the first one is to show that f of x is guaranteed to be greater than or equal to f tilde of x g of y the conjugate is the supremum over x of y transpose x minus f of x this means that for every x and y in rn g of y is greater than or equal to y transpose x minus f of x move f of x to this side and g of y to this side we have the inequality that f of x is greater than or equal to y transpose x minus g of y take the supremum of both sides with respect to y if we do this then this side is not a function of y we get f of x the other side will be f tilde of x by definition then f of x is greater than or equal to f tilde of x to show equality we will need to prove that f of x is less than or equal to f tilde of x our next step in the proof is to focus on affine functions suppose that f of x is alpha transpose x plus beta alpha is a vector in rn and beta is a real number what is the Finchel transform or the Finchel conjugate of this function f of x. Write down the definition. g of y is y transpose x minus the function f of x, which in our case is alpha transpose x plus beta, and we take the supremum over x in Rn. Combine these two terms. g of y is the supremum of minus beta plus y minus alpha transpose x. We are computing this supremum given y. Now suppose that y happens to be exactly equal to this vector alpha. Vector y is equal to vector alpha. We are computing this for every y in Rn. If y is alpha, then this inner product is equal to zero. And we are left with this minus beta. So g of alpha is equal to minus beta. If y is not equal to alpha, this means that y minus alpha is not the all zero vector in the n-dimensional space. The claim is that the supremum is plus infinity. Why is this? If y minus alpha is not the all zero vector, let's take x to be equal to y minus alpha, this vector times a positive constant eta. If we do this, the first term here becomes eta times the L to norm squared of this non-zero vector. By increasing eta, this function g of y will increase because eta is multiplied by a strictly positive number. We can make g of y arbitrarily large by making eta large enough. This means that the supremum here is plus infinity when y is not equal to alpha. The potential conjugate of the affine function alpha transpose x plus beta is minus beta when y is equal to alpha plus infinity otherwise now let's take the conjugate of the conjugate function f tilde of x is the supremum y transpose x minus g of y if y is anything other than alpha then this quantity here is minus infinity because it is plus infinity when y is not equal to alpha and we have a minus sign here if y is equal to alpha we get a finite value specifically alpha transpose x minus the value of g of y and y is alpha which is minus beta that's alpha transpose plus beta this is exactly f of x for affine functions by direct computation of the conjugate and the conjugate of the conjugate we know that f tilde of x is equal to f of x 
our two conclusions so far are that f of x is always greater than or equal to f tilde of x. And if we focus on affine functions, f of x is equal to f tilde of x. Suppose we have two functions and f1 of x is greater than f2 of x. g1 of y is the potential conjugate of f1 of x. g2 of y is the potential conjugate of f2 of x. If f1 of x is greater than f2 of x for every x in Rn, multiply both sides by minus 1, minus f1 of x is less than or equal to minus f2 of x. Add y transpose x to both sides. Now take the supremum of both sides with respect to x in Rn. In this case, we will get that the potential transform of f1, the function g1 of y, is less than or equal to g2 of y. If f1 is greater than or equal to f2, then when we take the potential transform, g1 is less than or equal to g2, we can take the potential transform again. And doing the same steps, we can prove that f1 tilde of x is greater than or equal to f2 tilde of x. Conclusion is that if f1 of x is greater than or equal to f2 of x for every x in Rn, then g1 of y is less than or equal to g2 of y for every y in Rn, and f1 tilde of x is greater than or equal to f2 tilde of x for every x in Rn. The fourth point is that if we have A is the set of affine functions, and AF is the set of affine functions that are global underestimators of the function f of x, which means that any affine function in this set A sub f is less than or equal to f of x for every x in Rn, then we can show that f of x can be written as the supremum of a of x, where a is in this set a f. To describe this in words, we see that the function f is the pointwise supremum, and here by f, don't forget that it is proper, closed, and convex. It is the pointwise supremum of its global affine underestimators. Let's make use of this fact. Take any a from this set a sub f, f of x is greater than or equal to a of x, and this is true for any small a taken from this set by definition. Now, according to our third point here, because f of x is greater than or equal to a of x, if we take the potential transform twice of both sides, we end up with this result here. The potential conjugate of the potential conjugate of f, which is f tilde of x, is greater than or equal to the potential conjugate of the potential conjugate of a, and is an affine function. In the second point, we have shown that for affine functions, this is guaranteed. f tilde of x is equal to f of x. If we come here, f of x is greater than or equal to a of x, then f tilde of x is greater than or equal to the potential conjugate of the potential conjugate of a of x, which is a of x as proved in the second point. Now we have this result. Take the supremum of both sides over all affine functions that are in this set a f. In other words, over all affine functions that are global underestimators of the function f of x. So f tilde of x will be greater than or equal to this supremum. And this supremum is exactly the function f of x itself. So f tilde of x is greater than or equal to f of x. Thus, when f is proper, closed, and convex, the potential conjugate of its potential conjugate is itself f of x.